the first thing we're going to do is take the axle bolt out. This can be very tight, so use of an impact or a breaker bar is required. You have a couple options on getting this bolt out. You can stick a lug bolt back in through the rotor into the hub and stick a screwdriver into the vent of the rotor, rest it up against a caliper bracket, and use a breaker bar. Or before you pull the wheel off while the vehicle is still on the ground, you can use a breaker bar or an impact to loosen this up. The next thing we're going to remove is the brake caliper and rotor, but first make sure to unhook the brake pad sensor. If all I'm doing is a wheel bearing and I'm not doing the brake job at the same time, then I leave the caliper attached to the bracket and just remove the bracket bolts. You always want to hang the caliper from a bungee cord or a piece of wire and don't let it hang on the brake hose. We are now going to pull the hub off. If you don't have the special tools to do this, you can always pull the entire knuckle off and take it to a shop to have the wheel bearing pressed out. So I bolt the hub adapter plate back up to the hub and attach a slide hammer. The slide hammer I use is from Mueller Coops. It has an extremely heavy slide and it makes it really easy to pull these hubs off. The next thing we're going to do is unbolt the lower ball joint from the control arm. If you're working on an Audi, these lower control arms are adjustable. So you might want to mark these or have it aligned afterwards if it's an MK4 Jetta or Volkswagen Beetle they are not slotted holes and you don't have to worry about it we're just going to pry the uh, control arm down separate it from the ball joint after the bolts are loose that way we can pop the axle out of the back of the wheel bearing Now there'll be a snap ring in the front of the knuckle holding the bearing in. Now you're going to need some specialty tools or a shop press. I use the SIR Tools B90 wheel bearing press kit. This kit has all the adapters necessary for Asian, domestic, and European vehicles. So I've mounted a large cup to the front of the knuckle with a forcing screw going through and a small plate on the back of the wheel bearing. So when I tighten the bolt, it's pulling the wheel bearing into this cup and out of the knuckle. I always spray a little bit of penetrating oil or grease in here and wipe it out before I install the new bearing. And we're going to use the same tool to reinstall it, only we're going to put a large plate in the back, the small plate up front. When you tighten down on the screw, it's going to install the wheel bearing back into the knuckle. After the wheel bearing is fully installed, 
reinstall the snap ring that we removed earlier. Now if we're using your old hub, there's part of the old bearing we need to remove from this hub before we can reinstall it. I just cut the old seal off and I'm going to use a special tool to remove the race without having to cut it. This is the bearing race removal tool from Muller Coops. It's a three jawed puller and it has a uh, chain with a bolt that holds the puller tight against the race and it gets down in there below the reluctor ring without damaging it. And if you guys are looking for these tools, I will link them down in the description. And then once again, I'll use the B90 bearing press tool to reinstall the hub back into the wheel bearing. I'm going to use one of the small spacers in the back and then put the forcing screw all the way through. And this will suck the hub back into the wheel bearing without pushing the wheel bearing apart. Now we're going to line the axle back up into the hub and get the bolt started a few threads so it doesn't fall out. Then we can get the lower ball joint hooked back into the lower control arm. Make sure to tighten these nuts down where you previously marked them if the control arm is adjustable. We can now reassemble the brakes, install the brake rotor. I normally throw a lug bolt back in to hold the rotor on. Some of these will have a small set screw that holds the rotor in place. Now you can reinstall the brake caliper bracket and caliper. If you're torquing these bolts, the service manual calls for 125 newton meters or 92 foot pounds. Once the caliper is tight, make sure to plug in the brake pad wear sensor. And now we're going to set the wheel back on, get all the lug nuts started, and at least snugged up so we can get it on the ground and torque them. We're going to tighten these in a crisscrossing star pattern to 120 newton meters or 90 foot pounds. And then with the vehicle in gear and the parking brake set or have a helper hold the brake pedal down, we're going to torque the axle bolt. The axle bolt is first tightened to 190 newton meters or 140 foot pounds plus an additional 90 degrees or a quarter turn. 